This do in remembrance of me. I'm one of them, praise the Lord, one of them, I'm one of them. Make up extensions and weaves and all those things that are after the world. That's not us. We are in the image of God and how he created us, in the likeness of him. Praise the Lord, one of them. One of them, oh, I'm washed in Jesus' blood, satisfied. I'm one of them. And let the women not to use up authority over the man in the spirit filled church. Praise, Praise the Lord. Lord. God set down an hierarchy, and that's what we live by and stand by.
Let's magnify Jesus. Hallelujah. Let's worship the name of the Lord Jesus. But he's worthy to be praised. Hallelujah. Honoring the name of Jesus Christ, our God and King. For he is worthy to be praised from the rising of the sun to the going down of the same, he is worthy. Glory and honor be to him who is the head of our lives. Without him, nothing is possible. Without him, everything is impossible. But with God, all things are possible. So we give God thanks that we can be here today on this, the first Sunday of November. Praise God, giving God thanks for his continuation and for his mercy that extended to this very day. We are not forgetful for his many benefits. And that's why we always, always, always want to give him thanks. Praise the Lord. It might seem repetitive to some, but I'm grateful to God that he is, he loves praise. He loves when we lift him up. In fact, the scripture says, if you fell from lifting him up, then he will rise up wooden stone. Praise God. And I'm trying my best that no wood or stone takes my praise. Praise the Lord. It's a sad case when wood and stone takes your place. But I'm glad today that we are here magnifying the name of the Lord Jesus. Today we're going to have um, some fellowship being handed out to those that want to be a part of General Assembly. Praise the name of Jesus. Sometimes they think when you talk about right hand of fellowship there, talk as if they're not in the body of Christ. Every, anybody baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ is a part of the body. Yes. Praise, Praise the Lord. Any that receive the Holy Spirit is a part of the body. Amen. Praise the Lord. But when we talk about this, we're talking about to be able to function and to move within General Assembly Amen. and the running of it and the operation of it to those that belong to it. So this is just um, the words of the Lord that are there for those that feel it necessary to want to be a part of this great and wonderful assembly, the family of General Assembly of our Lord Jesus Christ of the Apostles' Faith. Praise God. Um, so those who want to take fellowship today, please come to the altar in Jesus' name. Come and die in the Master's calling. Come and die, you may feast at Jesus' table all the time. He who fed the multitude turned the water into wine to the hungry call at night. Come and die, oh Lord. Come and die, and the master's calling. Come and die. You may feast at Jesus' table all the time. He who fed the multitude turned the water into wine to the hungry call at night. Come and die. Praise the name of the Lord Jesus. For those who have seen a right hand of fellowship, usually we go through all the scriptures, praise the Lord, but to expedite time, we've already seen the candidates and have gone through the scriptural content already and answered any questions that they might have concerning, so they are quite versed in what's going on here today. But just to refresh the memories, we're talking about the baptism in the name of Jesus Christ. Yes. We're talking about receiving the Spirit of God yep. according to the book of Acts. We're talking about the social conduct, Amen. praise God, of how we keep our body free from alcohol, tobacco, and all those habitual forms. Praise the Lord from going to pubs and those kind of things. Praise the Lord, not dating and having boyfriends and girlfriends. Praise the Lord as a not as attributed to holiness. Praise God. Praise God. Talking about the appearance and the dress of both male and female. 
that it be according to being modest, praise the Lord, and not being like the world, that every whim of every fashion that comes along, that we suck onto it to be up in the trends, but knowing that a sober mind, one to be holy, clean, separate from the world, not fashioned like the world, for the world follows sin, shame, and disgrace. But to make sure that, you know, they, they confirm about having your head covered. Praise the Lord. Knowing that that is, you cannot pray or prophesy without having your head covered. Praise the Lord. It's a part of the dress code of the women of God. And the opposite for the man is that now your head can't be covered when you're prophesying or preaching. Praise God. For that is dishonoring the head. Makeup extensions and weaves and all those things that are after the world. I would love to say that it's just women arching the eyebrows. <laughs> but not today. Men are doing it now more and more. Makeup one time was a woman thing. But not anymore. Praise the Lord. Both genders are now patting foundation and doing all kinds of things praise God that's not us praise the Lord we are in the image of God and how he created us in the likeness of him praise God our personal responsibilities that we find it at all times possible to be gathered together in the house of the Lord to pay tithes upon the first day of the week to share the obligations of the church when needed to do so. As you hear that we're talking about the roof and the matters, we are not here to beg the world with a pan down the road shaking a tin. Praise God, because our God can do everything. Yeah. Amen. Praise the Lord. When they were building the tabernacle, Moses asked the people to give. And the Bible said something that doesn't usually happen today. Moses had to go back and say, okay, people, don't give no more. We have no room to store what you have given us. Let's magnify the name of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. And to report whenever you're sick or can't kind of attend to the church that we can pray for you. Praise the Lord. Someone being absent shouldn't be something, a mystery. Praise God. I know that some people are very private, but you should tell somebody that you're sick. Even if you can't divulge the depth of the sickness but whilst you are sick someone can pray Amen. praise God if anyone who's really been sick you know you can pray can I get an amen in here amen. when you are really sick the only thing you can do is grunt yes. that's why when you call and let someone know you're sick they can pray and make intercession on your behalf also the respect for leadership, praise God, and that we'll take no evil report against an elder, but admonish him as a father. And that the women not to use up authority over the man in the spirit-filled church. Praise, praise the Lord. God set down a hierarchy, and that's what we live by and stand by. To make sure that you continue to understand not being fellowship with unfruitful workers. Praise the Lord. And to give those respect to those that are in the ministry or work, working, that are in positions of authority. To honor them in that position as that they're led to do. That also we make sure that we understand that the Bible says that the saints shall judge the earth. Therefore we don't take our brother and sister to the court of law. To have the sinners and the ungodly give judgment upon us but we should have one wise amongst us Amen. praise the Lord praise there should be one wise amongst us yes. that are able to make the right judgments and that we should be humble enough that when those judgments are done that we say yes praise the name of the Lord and then to understand lastly about personal relationships that we will not be yoked with unbelievers. No, sir. Praise the Lord. Praise by giving in to marry 
to someone that's not of the same position as yourself within the church. Praise God. And lastly, we don't pursue to marry anyone whilst your husband or wife is married. Because marriage should only be once. Therefore, if you are divorced or separated, you should not be seeking another. For then you'll be committing adultery or committing fornication, whichever it may be. So we admit that's one of the rules that we have down here. Amen. Praise, God. Praise, praise God. And this is what we've put forward as a mandate for the standard of General Assembly. And there is so much more, but this is the starting point in which you take the step. Because you can't feed somebody everything all at once. But you lay the foundation. And the Bible says you build thereon. Praise God. So at this time, everything that I've said, if you still want to be a member, and please, I say this and I'll say it again, there is no pressure. Everything that I've mentioned is for you to willingly do. You don't have to. Won't hold a heart against you. Won't feel no way. Praise the Lord. As I said at the very beginning, this is not you entering into the body of Christ. Because you already did it when you're baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. If you receive the Holy Ghost, when you receive the Holy Ghost, you are still part of the body. Praise the Lord. But everybody needs a head. Amen. For everything that's been said and you still have the heart to come follow us here at General Assembly. Say, I do. Praise God. Turn around to the congregation. Let them see. Praise God. Praise God. Now, traditionally, we usually do the welcome. Praise God. So let us welcome them to the family of General Assembly in Jesus' name. And then, the Lord, I'm one. If you go around this way, I'm one of them. Praise the Lord, I'm one of them. I'm one of them. Praise the Lord, I'm one of them. I'm washed in Jesus' blood and sanctified. I'm one of them. Praise the Lord, I'm one of them. I'm one of them. Praise the Lord, I'm one of them. I'm one of them. Praise the Lord, I'm one of them. Yes, I'm washed in Jesus' blood and sanctified. I'm one of them. Praise the Lord, I'm one of them. I'm one of them. Praise the Lord, I'm one of them. Praise the Lord, I'm one of them. Oh, 
see them working in the church you don't have to look around and wonder what they're doing you know that they're one of them praise God it could have very easily been done privately but so you know who your brethren are so we do it before you God bless you all in Jesus name you may be seated thank you praise God you may be seated we give God thanks praise the Lord we thank the Lord for the kingdom work, praise God, and that the church is moving forward and going on from strength to strength. Praise the Lord. I remember the first baptism at St. Chad's 42 years ago. The young man was called Barry Palmer first baptism that we had at St. Chad's. Praise God. He's not here, but Mount Olive is still here. Praise God. And he said he would add unto the church daily, such as to be saved. We give God thanks. Praise the Lord. And we've gathered this evening for this, our Lord's Supper service, where we take time to digest the words of the Lord, we bind them on our fingers, and write them on the tables of our hearts. It could be very easily just a ritualistic thing that you do. Because the Bible says, as oft as you do this, yeah, you do it in remembrance of me. Sometimes if we do it just for the doing its sake, we lose the real value of what we are doing. Because there are times human nature takes things for granted. There are times when human nature does not actually grasp the importance of what they are doing. And that was why Paul had to speak to the Corinthian brethren. Because even though they were doing the service, doing what was 
told them to do, they had somehow forgone the true value of what they were doing. There are times when money isn't dealt with its true value. Because if money comes to you easy, the value of it becomes small. But if money comes to you quite difficultly, the value of that very same pound is worth a lot. For those who it comes to easy, the phrase comes, easy come, easy go. But for those who have to work by the sweat of their face, for those who have to rise up early and to sit up late, they understand the value of the said pound. You see, if you don't understand what Jesus Christ went through, that we could dine and eat at such a prestige table. You eat the bread and don't know the value of the bread. You drink the wine and don't know the value of the wine. For some eat the bread and yet do not realize they're eating his flesh. They drink the wine and don't realize they are drinking his blood. So to some, it is just bread and wine. And the same bread and wine to others, they imagine him suffering on the cross. They imagine when they came to break his legs, but when they saw that he was already dead, they took a sword and pierced his side. And out of his side came blood and water. When they drink the wine, they imagine his side being pierced. Today, what do you value of this bread and wine? Do you know the cost that causes us to be able to stand here today and to consider what we are doing? Some may believe in their hearts that if I don't take it and if I don't drink it, I'm fine. It just lets me know you have not considered the cost. What is the true value of the body of Jesus Christ? What is the true value of his blood that was shed? Have you never been somewhere where good food has been wasted? You go to a restaurant, a buffet, and you see people pile up their plates. When they pile it up, they eat a bit and disregard it. If they'd have known what it took to have a plate of food, if they'd have known the value that it has to be able to eat as much as you want, they would not have taken so much. But because it comes easy, because they believe they know the value and worth, they take it and disregard it. So Paul said, what have you not houses to eat and to drink in? Or despise ye the church of God and shame them that have not. In other words, in this multitude, there are mixed attitudes towards the body and the blood of Jesus Christ. There's a mixed 
looking at it. Some see it just as sustenance. Some see it as just a drink. Bible said he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him and by his stripes, by his beatings, by his sufferings, we are healed. You see, sometimes we just have not borne the pain of sin. Let me repeat myself. Sometimes we have not borne the pain of sin. You see, hell hasn't come yet. Hell isn't here yet. Because when hell comes, we will bear the pain of sin. But at this moment in time, we are not bearing the pain of sin. Many think that hell isn't real. Many think that they have suffered in this life. But Jesus bore all of it so that you and I didn't have to. When I look at my father and those of that generation that came to the UK in the 50s and the 60s, they went through such anguish and pain. Their lives were difficult. Their lives were hurt by those that were around them. They were seen as less than human. Everywhere they turned, opposition was against them. Everything they tried to do, it was an uphill battle. And they bear it all so that me, my children, could have a better life. The things that they went through, I did not suffer that. They suffered it so I didn't have to. They took the poor jobs, the lowly paid jobs, the abuse, they took it so that I did not have to. Yes, I may have had a little. Yes, I may have had some. But they bear the brunt of it all. They had to have communities, groups to help themselves. You know that when they needed a little money, they had to chore a partner. Because the banks would not give them no money. So they would throw their partner between themselves. They became their own bank supply. And from that means they were able to buy houses, cars, look after their families. Today we don't have partner. We go to the bank manager and we sit down and do our credit score. Back those times your credit score was your face. And if your face was the wrong credit, you couldn't get no credit. They bear the brunt of it. Jesus paid it all. Jesus paid that price. So when you come together in this place to eat his body and to drink his blood, know the price it took that he shed 
for you and that he bear for you. Do not take it for granted. Take it for granted. And today people have the audacity to say, oh, it's, it's hard. Life is hard. <laughs> When everything has now moved up a level. The time when you wanted a job, you looked in the window, it says no dogs, no blacks, no Irish. You couldn't even get an interview. But today every one of you go for a job, you get an interview. They bear that so that we now have a better chance. My God, education? Come on, brethren. Huh? I'm looking now around you. If I was say, all those with degrees, raise your hand. Raise your hand, all those who have degrees. Hear my voice. Hello? Raise it high. Huh? You think back in those days, you could have had degrees, but they bear it so that we could have life and have it more abundantly. And you know what the hurtful thing is? These degree kids and educated kids turn around and look at their parents. Like they are better than. Oh, come on, church. Like they are more than. And don't realize they brunt the pain. They bear the sorrow. They bear the grief. So the only thing you have to worry about is if you could do the work. Oh, come on, church. So Paul had to say, I've received of the Lord. That which also I've given unto you. Praise God that the Lord in the same night in which he was betrayed. Praise God took bread. And when he had given thanks he broke it and said take it. This is my body. Which is broken for you. Do this. When you want to remember me. After the same manner he also he took the cup. And when he had supped, saying, this cup is the New Testament in my blood, this do he as often as you do it, in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you do show the Lord's death till he comes. Remember what Christ had done. This is not just something we ritualistically do. Because it's first Sunday. Because we come together. We take Lord's Supper. Yeah? It's more than that. It's more than that. It's more than that. You remember when Christ was born and as a babe. Herod wanted to kill him. Yes. Huh? Young baby, born. Yeah. They asked the question, where is he that is born king of the Jews? For we have seen his star in the east and are come to worship him. When, Trump, when Herod heard all this, he was troubled oh, and all Jerusalem with him. This is what we have. The devil wanted to destroy it a long time ago. But he did it and he ensured that he went to the cross. That you and I today could eat and drink 
of him. Peter thought he understood. Peter thought he had the revelation of God, which he did. But Peter thought that being as I know who he is, Jesus said, look, you must wash one another's feet. Peter was happy to eat his bread and to drink the wine. He was happy doing that. But the moment the Lord took a basin and girded himself and stood down at his disciples' feet and washed it, Peter looked at it and says, Thou shalt wash me not. You will never wash my feet. Jesus said, if I then, your Lord and Master, praise God. I, I wonder today when folk, they're ready to drink the wine. They're ready to eat the bread, but I won't wash no one's feet. Glory to God. When Peter heard the statement of Jesus Christ, if I wash you not, you have how much? How much? How much? You see, brethren, you might think we wash foot for fun. I'm not washing my brother's foot because I like his foot. I want to have part in the first resurrection. So give me any foot you want. I'll wash it. I'm not sacrificing the washing of feet to have no lot and no part. You know, people are giving up eternal life with Jesus Christ for next to nothing. Huh? For next to nothing. Is it really worth it? I should be able to humble myself in the presence of God. That's why it makes an emphasis. If you eat it and drink it unworthily. Why is it unworthy? Because I have failed to recognize the importance of what I am doing. I have failed to look at the significance. Therefore, I eat it and I drink it unworthily. You know that there is some people, if they ask you for a hundred pound, you will never give them. Because you know when you give it them, they're going to waste it. They'll beg with all tears, I need, I need the money, I need the money. And as they get the money, what they asked you for it, for, they don't use it on that at all. Hmm? They sort it with tears. And they give you the story behind it. And as soon as you have compassion and you give it to them, they go away and do something else. Bible says then for this cause, for this cause, for this cause, not taking into consideration the true value of the blood of Jesus Christ. The true value of the body of Jesus Christ. Therefore, for this cause, many, not all, but many are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep.
if we would judge ourselves, if we would truly turn the light on ourselves and look at the importance, look at the significance, and then line ourselves up with it, praise the name of the Lord Jesus. And then when we line ourselves up with it, we become more than just a first Sunday partaker. Let me repeat myself. When we consider this and what it really means, we are no longer just a first Sunday partaker. Because sometimes people have the habit of getting ready for particular occasions. But when the occasion is passed or too far away, they pay no attention to what's going on. Hmm? Children coming up to their birthday and no birthday soon. Mommy, you want a cup of tea? <laughs> Mommy, I tidied my bedroom. What are they doing? They're letting you know I'm preparing myself. But as soon as birthday over, you tidy your room. Oh, mom. You see, brethren, I don't want you to treat this in the same manner. That you prepare yourself for first Sunday, but when it's over, you revert back to something else. It says, for this cause, many are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep. For if we would judge ourselves, we should not be judged. But, but when we are judged, you see, brethren, guess what? This is right now what I'm doing. I'm chastening you. The words that come out of my mouth are chastisement to you. To some of you, it is light chastisement. Oh, glory to God. But to some of you, this is really heavy. My two last children. I could take my two fingers when they were little and do like and then cry. Cry like as if good beating take place. Just two finger. The others would look and say, what's that? But it was enough to correct them. You see, sometimes the word of preach, and for some of you, it's not enough to correct you. But to others who hear the same message, it straightens you out. You see, some won't take heed unless you jump off the roof with a latch. Some won't hear you unless you break branch from the back and tear off the leaves. And make a sound in the sky. And some of you will hear, don't do it. And that's enough. But when we are judged, we are chastened of the Lord. That we should not be condemned with the world. So when you come together, brethren. Tarry one for another in other words wait or pray wait and pray for one another because listen brethren we are all in this together and because I find it easy doesn't mean that you find it easy and if the other one finds it hard it doesn't mean that I find it hard but not like Cain and said to the Lord, am I my brother's keeper? 
We are our brother's keeper. Where we can, we pray and we fast and we encourage to the time coming that they too can eat and drink of that same cup and reach the place where they should be. Because there was a time when we were in doubt. When we were not sure. Where we was unstable in our thoughts. But as the word of God became embedded in our hearts, as our love flourished like a green bay tree, it became easier to eat. It became easier to drink. It became easier to wash one another's feet. We were no longer embarrassed by these practices, but we're grateful that we were partakers of this full and free salvation. So today at the hearing of my voice, harden not your heart. Let us gather around, brethren. Jesus shall be. Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. When he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. Observing the body of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ.
After the same manner also, he took the cup. When he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. Do this as oft as you drink it in remembrance of me. Observing the blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. my soul is held and sanctified.
name of the Lord Jesus Christ, again we thank you, Lord God, for this day, this opportunity, this privilege and honor that we can come before you, Lord Jesus, to come and dine at your table. We thank you for your blood that was shed on Calvary. We thank you for the blood, for the body that was broken for us, Lord God. We thank you for the provisions that you have made for us, your people. And Lord God, we pray that everything we do, Lord God, that you get the glory and that you get the honor. That you be lifted up from this earth, that you will draw all men unto you. Lord God, let our walking and our talking not be in vain. Let us rising up early, Lord God, sitting up late, let it not be in vain. Lord God, let the life that we're living sanctified and holy, Lord God, let it not be in vain. These mercies we ask of you and many more, in the name of Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen. 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 And amen. Jesus, rise from supper, he lay aside his garment, and he stood, and he washed his disciples' feet in the light, in the light. We are walking in the light of love. Rise from supper,
it's raining. Put up your umbrella and soak up in Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord Jesus. I must have the Savior with me for I dare not walk alone. I must be His presence near me.
Father God in Christ, nothing in their hands they bring. Jesus. But Lord God, to the cross they will cling. Lord God, you said, young man, I write unto you because you are strong. Father, because they are strong, Lord, they stand before your throne of grace, Lord. Lord God, not depend upon their own strength, Lord. But Lord God, they are living upon the everlasting arms of faith. Lord God, as they're about to go to school tomorrow, Lord. Lord God, you know what is before them, Lord Jesus. Therefore, I pray right now, in the name of Jesus Christ, I pray your presence, Lord. Lord God, we'll go ahead of them, Lord, I pray. Lord God, do the work thyself, Lord. Lord God, you send an angel ahead of Israel, Lord God. When they travel, Lord God, through Canaan, Lord Jesus. You led them out of, out of Egypt, Lord. And you said the same angel will guide them, Lord. Lord God, you promise in your word that he that dwells in the secret place of the Most High, Lord God, shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty, Lord. Lord God, we pray, Lord, you will cast your shadow over them, Lord. But Lord God, you will cover them, I pray, from the throne of the head, Lord. Right down to the soles at their feet, Lord. Lord God, give them bones to stand upon your promise, Lord. Give the angels charge over them, I pray. Lest they dash your foot against your stone. Lord God, when they come against those who seek to pull them down, Lord. Lord God, let your divine spirit, I pray. Lord God, lift up a divine standard, Lord God. But Lord God, the world may know, Lord God, these are your people, Lord, that are called by your name, Lord. Therefore, guide their foot, their foot as I pray. Be for them, I pray, Lord God. Be, Lord God, their shield, Lord God, and their exceeding great reward. Lord God, keep them, I pray, under the shadow of your divine wings, Lord. And let your presence continue to be with them, I pray. Fortify the mind, I pray, against every philosophy, Lord God, and vain deceit, Lord Jesus. Plant your word in their hearts, Lord God. And there is thy word, O God, of a hidden in my heart, that I might not sin against thee, Lord. Therefore, keep them, I pray, Lord God, and preserve them, Lord God. Let the light shine for them, Lord, that, Lord God, earth can see the light, and they can be led to glorify your name on earth as it is in heaven. Therefore, guide them, I pray, Lord God. Be for them. Be the shepherd, Lord God. Shepherd them in, Lord. Hallelujah. And shepherd them out, I pray. Bless and sanctify as we give you thanks. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Give them peace, I pray, Lord God. Give them joy. Let the presence be with them, I pray. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. In the name of Jesus Christ, in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. And amen. 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 Amen.
towards you. Hallelujah. Father God in Christ, you speak by yourself and say, Lord, you will make man in your image and likeness. Here are your people, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh God, our leader of General Assembly, our Bishop Lord Jesus, and the brethren with me, we commit them fully into your charge. Hallelujah. Into your hands, Lord, that they will protect them. Come on them, Lord Jesus. Put a hedge around them as you have done for Brother Joe. Guide them, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh God, as they turn leave, amen, to take their journey to Canada. We pray, Lord, that each and every one of them will be a blessing. Hallelujah to each and every one of them. Father God in Christ, we pray, Lord Jesus, that they amen, hallelujah, circle them, Lord, with your power. Hallelujah. Oh, God in Christ, strengthen them. Hallelujah. Oh, Father, protect, Lord Jesus, the plane that they are going to travel in. The vehicle, Lord Jesus, from here to the airport. Father God in Christ. Don't know us the evil that are here that is established around us. But we pray, Lord Jesus, by your great power. Oh God, you are declared that all power, hallelujah, is given unto thee. In heaven and earth, Lord, these are your people. Hallelujah. Have thou no way, Lord. Lord Jesus, we know, Lord Jesus, <coughs> you carry every storm. Hallelujah. Oh, Father God, you keep the plane in the air as they travel across in the sky. Holy Ghost, in your name, Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I present each and every one of them in your hands. While they are there, Lord, I pray, Lord, that they will protect them. Come them, I plead, I plead unto thee. That's Lord Jesus, I help them, Lord, that they may as again, I repeat, that they may be a blessed Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I pray that their traveling will not be in vain. But some soul, Lord, will receive a blessing because of them. Hallelujah. Appearance in Canada. Come on, them, Lord. As we present them in your church, in no other name, but in the mighty name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Lord, in their going out and in their coming in, I deliver them into your charge. In Jesus Christ's holy name. Amen and amen. Lord God, that you touch her, Lord God, 
and bring her out, Lord God, of this sickness, Lord Jesus. Deliver as only you can. Lord God, make a way where there is no way. Lord Jesus, others who are absent, Lord God, I pray you remember them also in your mercy. Lord Jesus, those who are reported to have had operation and those who are sick at home, Lord Jesus, I put them all into your hands. Lord Jesus, the surgeon didn't care too much. Lord God, the medication can't handle it. Lord Jesus, but you, Lord, are able to do exceedingly and abundantly above all we ask or even think. Jesus, 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 have your way, Lord. Lord Jesus, even some present tonight in the building and their body is rocking with fear. Jesus, 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 make a difference, I pray, Lord. Lord Jesus, I pray, oh God, if there be anybody in the sounding of my voice, any present, Lord Jesus, oh God, who is halting up to opinion, Jesus, Jesus, touch their mind, Lord Jesus. Lord God, and have your way. Lord Jesus, let somebody strength be renewed. Lord God, as only you can. Have thine own way, we pray, Lord. While we say thanks in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you, Lord. Now unto him that is able to keep us from falling and to present us faultless before the presence of his glory. We'll exceed in joy to the only wise God our Savior. To him be glory, majesty, dominion, and power, but now forevermore. In Jesus' name, amen.